I am an introvert. I have a 9 p.m. cutoff where I need to go home, plug in my Christmas lights in my room, and turn on some music. With the warm, ambient light illuminating my room, slowly but surely, I feel energy come back to me. This silence is where I find my peace of mind. Spending time with people in more than groups of two is draining. I have always been this way. On my kindergarten report card, my teacher pen, Jasmine likes to play with others, but often likes to play alone. What's wrong with being alone? I asked myself, reading it 16 years later. It may surprise you that I'm an introvert. You may be thinking, but she talks so much in class. She has to be an extrovert. Introversion is then misunderstood as how social you are, but it is not synonymous with shyness, nor is it a measure of how comfortable you are talking with people. Rather, it is how you respond to stimuli and how you regain your energy. Introverts, rather than gaining energy from social settings, expend energy, needing to recharge later on on their own. Extroverts, energy, then expends outward, gaining it from socialization and highly stimulating activities. Introverts are not a rare breed, yet do not always fit well into the world. With open concept workplaces that squish too many bodies into one area to promote teamwork, we live in an extroverted oriented world. People have told me that I need to adapt. Not wanting to seem antisocial or difficult to work with, I suppress my introversion, pushing myself to be more outwardly. Still, I'm often overwhelmed by too much stimuli, and I don't party, I don't go to the bar, and in high school, I was pegged as someone who didn't like to have fun. Introverts can then be undervalued for their solitude, and it is seen as rude and weird and society makes the mistake in believing that they don't make good leaders. Workplaces then feel as though they need to fix introverts, and socially, those who are most outgoing are rewarded. Now, as an adult, I have embraced it. I go camping alone for a week, venturing to the always beautiful Chilliwack Lake to be 40 kilometers away from cell service. I need to get away and breathe deeply. This time alone is so crucial to my happiness. Every year, people feel bad for me, awkwardly inviting me to spend time with them because they're worried that me being alone is too hard on me. Camping, then being seen as a social and family-oriented activity, I deviate from people's expectations. And people don't always know how to respond to someone that goes alone or is so comfortable with being by themselves. When talking to me, they are intrigued and express discomfort in the thought of them being alone. But I am not unhappy, and I am not lonely, and being happy alone makes me feel powerful, and I hope others will see it that way too.